I got a question on Instagram the other day. I got a DM from one of you guys, and it was first being very complimentary about my mindset, but also just wondering how I was able to keep this mindset despite everything that happened in 2023. And if you don't know, just for a quick summary, 2023 was a year of a lot of loss for me and for Alex, where we lost my dad, we lost um, my family dog, Hank, we lost my sister's dog, Bocephus, we lost my brother's dog, Tony. And that is honestly just a little bit of the loss that we experienced in 2023 and the things that I shared publicly. Now, with all of that happening, you might wonder how I kept a positive attitude. And I know that being Delulu is real popular nowadays of having delusion. And I think that a little bit of delusion is, of course, healthy. But I think that really being able to think about what goes on in between these ears and what's going on within your thoughts is extremely, extremely beneficial. Because when I reflect back on 2023, when I think about everything that happened, I'm able to look at it and acknowledge the really, really bad and the really, really shit. And I'm also able to acknowledge the really, really positive that happened in 2023. So I think that one of the things that is extremely helpful is gratefulness and turning to gratefulness. And it's not always that you have to be grateful for the bad things that have happened. I know some people say that you should be be thankful because it made you into the person that you are, but maybe you're not in the headspace to be thankful for that. I know that I'm not thankful that my dad passed away or any of those dogs passed away. Of course, course, there are things that came from it that are positive, but it doesn't mean I have to sit here and fake this gratitude or thankfulness for something that I don't feel thankful for. I still feel hurt. I still have feelings about that that are all very valid. But I think that there's a separate portion that you can have gratefulness of the different things going on in your life and being able to make sure that you don't turn to spiraling, going to that all or nothing mentality, going into just a very slippery slope of negative thoughts and feelings and emotions. And I'm also not the person to tell you to sit here and fake again being happy when you might not be happy. But I think that there's a lot to be said about diffusing your thoughts and being able to pick them apart to see what which ones are beneficial for you and which ones might not be as beneficial for you. And with that, you might be thinking, Sue, it's not that simple to just be able to say this thought isn't helpful for me. I just need to put it to the side. But I, I do think that it can be that simple, but it comes down to how you can process that inside of your head. So I use the term thought diffusion or diffusing your thoughts, and that's the concept of that you can be aware of your thoughts or you can feel your thoughts, but it's also detaching from what they are and being able to recognize that you aren't your thoughts and you really can't be an emotion. Just like the concept of instead of just saying, I'm so anxious or I am anxious, you can't be that emotion. You as a human being can't just be anxiety. And so being able to even flip how you speak in those instances of instead of saying, I am anxious of I am having anxious feelings, or I do have anxiety, or I have anxious thoughts that go along with that. And so within that thought diffusion, I think that it's so, so helpful to instead of labeling yourself as one thing or thinking one way of being able to recognize you aren't your thoughts and those are separate from exactly who you are, and that action really makes more of a difference here. I think this was very clear to me when I remember thinking um, like bad things when I was younger and then immediately feeling guilt for thinking those things. And when I was talking to my mom about it, she was saying that there's always going to be thoughts that pop into our head, but it really matters, again, what you do with them. Do you take action on them? Do you dwell on them? Do you sit on them? Or do you kind of swipe that one away? because that's not one that you want to sit and dwell on. But it's also being able to recognize when you might need to really feel your feelings, but then also when it's important to put them away, so to speak. And I say put them away because, again, with everything that has happened and did happen in 2023, it's not that I need to forget that it happened and just move on. It's not that I need to brush it under the rug and just keep on going with my life. It's that those are all there and they can be there, but it doesn't mean that they are me and it doesn't
doesn't mean that I can't do things in spite of that. So you can have an emotion or have a feeling and you can freak out, you can feel awful about it, and then you can also do nothing about it. And I think that that is where a lot of power can come from is recognizing that you don't have to act on all of those, but even an action is doing nothing about that thing. Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. I had heard a term used recently called psychological rigidity and really talking about the difference between between rigidity and flexibility. And within psychological rigidity, saying that it's a cycle of behaviors, thoughts, and patterns that allow you to avoid negative emotions, but ultimately keep you stuck. And then if we go ahead and look at that psychological flexibility, it's the ability to feel thoughts and emotions and stay in contact with the present moment. So if you really look at the difference between those, the rigidity is a cycle of behaviors and thoughts and patterns, and the flexibility is the ability to feel your thoughts and emotions and stay in contact with still what's going on. So the difference there is being able to have that presence in what you're doing versus getting in this cycle being stuck. And I know that's a word I hear a lot is people feeling stuck in the situation that they are. And that can be due to that psychological rigidity because you just allow yourself to avoid negative emotions that do keep you stuck. And that's something that I've even mentioned in this same podcast is that you can still feel your feelings. So it's not that you should never have a negative emotion. I think that a lot of times people think that positivity is the absence of negative emotion or the absence of negativity. But I think that you can have positivity while there's still negative things going on. And what I like to ask myself is, will taking action on this thought make my life better or worse tomorrow? Because again, I don't think all negative thoughts are bad and it's that we have to get rid of them all. It's the fact that we can have them and choose to do something or not do something about them. And we can also choose to feel our thoughts, be able to disconnect from what they are and observe them and be present within the moment that we have. Because if we're constantly avoiding of I'm so afraid to feel this negative thing, then that avoidance avoidance perpetuates and enhances any kind of fear that we are having. And so being able to face things head on and go into them, because oftentimes when you do just accept that something bad might happen or being able to feel that negative is normally when it does go away, oddly enough. And that might sound ass backwards to you, but some of you might be nodding along and recognizing, hey, yes, when I have faced that head on, when I've allowed myself to feel that negative emotion or to experience that negative thing that I was so afraid to, it often dissipates because that's what that discomfort is. When people talk about that discomfort happens on the way to reach your goals, it's often because you have to experience uncomfortable emotions that a lot of times people just try to always be happy. And I don't know about you, but I don't think that there is a way that you can always be happy. I think that you can have joy and have positivity, but I don't think that emotion-wise you can never have anything negative happen to you. And if you have that headspace, then when negative things happen, then you're you're constantly fighting it because you think this shouldn't happen. It's kind of like perfectionism is that perfectionism isn't possible, being perfect isn't possible, but if you think that this can happen in this perfect way and you don't think that anything bad will ever happen, then that puts you in a place that when that bad does come along, it feels so much resistance towards what you're doing, where sometimes you have to lean into that bad or that negative emotion to be able to dissipate it. So while this is going to be very short and sweet, the main thing I want to get across here is that you are not your emotions. You can have emotions 
and also do nothing about them and feel like shit and do nothing about that. And not in the way of, okay, I'm going to feel like crap and then just keep living my life and con- consistently feel awful. But in the way of you can have this emotion that is rocking you, but also not let it continue to rock you, continue to be everything to you because you have power over that within the way that you think and the way that you also give yourself acceptance towards those negative things happening. And you also allow yourself to understand the context in which these things are happening. And you're able to reframe what this means in your life. If you are a bikini competitor who has competed well at the regional stage or at the national stage and not placed how you wanted, I would love the opportunity to work with you. If you would inquire via the link in the description box, that would be the first step. And from there, we'll get a call scheduled. And I look forward to speaking with you. Now, one of the next steps I want you to take is all going to be about presence, your values, and then taking that committed action that I talked about where you do need to take action towards something to actually make a change. But that presence aspect, it's that I find that so often we aren't in the present. We're thinking about what has already happened or what is going to happen. In any way that you can really ground yourself into what is currently happening can be so helpful. Throughout all of 2023, when it felt like everything was falling apart, and Instead of focusing and letting my brain drift to this is what's happened or this is what is going to happen or this is what's happening while this other thing is happening, I focused on the task at hand. And there's not going to be one perfect answer for that. For some people, it might be meditating or yoga. But for me, oftentimes it was going on walks because it allowed me to just focus on breathing, just focus on the task at hand. And I even did things like I either would listen to like a comfort album where it's It's just songs that I know, so I don't feel like I have to be paying attention and listening to them. Or even I often put the same song on repeat just so as I am going on the walk that I'm able to kind of zone out and just stick with the beat of the music. I even have certain songs that I feel like the beat stays the same throughout it. So I'm just able to focus on that beat and stay present in that way. Because sometimes when it comes to meditation, I find my brain drifting and having a hard time and it's like it's in the background of playing all these other things that are happening. So while I bring up why I bring up values is because everything in life, you need to have some sort of decision filter. And I was just talking about this actually earlier today. I had a hair appointment and was talking about the values that you have and how that aligns with the people that you spend time with, but also with, again, all of the actions that you take. Not only do I think it's beneficial to have values or core values for something like a company, like physical Physique development has their own core values, but also personally being able to have your own core values. Because then once you have those, you can run everything through that. And like I said, it can be a decision filter for you of really being able to see, does this align? Does this person align? Does this action align? Does this thought align with these values? And what do I need to do next? Because if they do align with these, then taking the action, or if it doesn't align with it, what do I need to do with this thought? that's going on. And I think that as human beings, one thing that's so cool and special and wonderful is that we are complex. And so that doesn't mean things have to be either good or bad. They can be good and bad. And same with your emotions. You don't have to just be one emotion. You can have multiple emotions, but then being able to choose the presence and the emotion that you want to be in. So then comes along that committed action. And like I said, it has to take action with anything that you are doing. So especially in the spirit of the new year and things like resolutions, I think that Well, I even thought about making a whole podcast talking about how to set goals and how to use SMART goals um, to really make sure that you nail those down. But I think that that sometimes can feel very overwhelming of, oh my gosh, I have to go through this whole thing and I have to plan this whole thing out. And of course, I think that those are beneficial. But again, that can feel very overwhelming when you're just trying to take one step in the right direction and take that committed action. And so what I really challenge you 
to do when it comes to this action is just being able to clump habits that you already do to be able to take action towards something that you want. And if you're not sure what your goals are, you can set SMART goals. But again, if you don't know what your goals are, then how are you going to set those SMART goals? But even really being able to look at your values of does this align with my values and what I want to do? I had posted on my story the other day, actually, of that I was not having the best appetite, but some of my values and some of my goals and things I want to live by are like, I'm wanting to grow my glutes. I'm also wanting to make sure that we can grow our business and that I can pour into the business and continue to pour into my marriage and my family. And so within those things, something that aligns with that is I need to ensure that I eat enough food. I need to eat enough food to truly see the glute growth that I want to see. I need to eat enough food to feel fueled, to be able to take care of myself and to be able to take care of my family and uh, take care of everything that I want to take care of. And I need to have enough fuel to have the brain power to be able to take care of our business. And so anytime that I'm thinking, oh, should I or shouldn't I do this? Or is this thought or emotion helpful for me? It's being able to run it back through of, hey, what are the main things that I am really wanting to do within my life? And like I said, if you don't know what those are, one really great way to go about it is just taking someone that you look up to and thinking, what would they do in this situation? Is there someone that objectively has a quote unquote better life than you? Are they in a place that they're either making more money or they have success in a way that you want it or they have a better relationship with their significant other or they have a physique that you want? Of course, of course, and especially with saying that having the physique that you want, it doesn't mean that just because you do everything that they do that it's going to happen the exact same way. But if you are still stuck in a place where you wonder or think, I don't know my goals, or I don't know how to work backwards from them, then being able to just look at someone that you look up to and think, hey, would they do this thing? And due to what they have that I want to have, what can I do to work closer to that? So that is going to be all for today, but I hope that you take some time to really think about your thoughts, but also being able to detach yourself from those thoughts and recognize you aren't your thoughts and you can have that separation. And even if something really bad is happening in your life right now, that that doesn't mean that you can't do what you want to do to be able to move your life forward. So I uh, can't wait for everything that 2024 has in store. We have some great episodes coming up talking about water fasting and if you should or shouldn't do it, as well as how to navigate coming back from being sick, which I know that there's a bug going around. So being able to have that episode will be super duper helpful. But with us also talking about resolutions, if you or someone in your life you know is starting with a New Year's resolution, we did recently do an episode, Alex did of if he were to start his fitness journey over, what he would do and what he would suggest you to do. So I will make sure that is linked down below so that you guys can take a listen to that. But that will be super helpful to share with any family or friends as well as to listen for yourself. But I hope you guys had a great new year and I'm very happy because the Packers won on New Year's Eve. I know that this will be going live after the Packers next game against the Bears. So I really hope that I'm also saying that there's another win coming our way for the pack for us to go to the playoffs, but I'll catch you in the next episode.